Okay, we're going to write polynomial function given zero. This is the second video. Uh, this is some more examples with some more difficult problems. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you uh, a problem. So let's say that we had the problem where one zero was three plus two i. If one zero was pl three plus two i, then that means that a factor is x minus three plus two i. But if 3 plus 2i is a 0, so is 3 minus 2i. So therefore, you also have the 0, x minus 3 minus 2i. So then we're going to foil that, and that is can be a real bear. And I'm going to show you a trick that will make that fairly easy. So the first thing I want you to do is you can think about this as a foil tr trick, foiling trick. It's not really a trick, it's just a way to solve the problem without getting too trapped up in the algebra. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange these terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this so it's x minus 3, distribute the negative, that's a minus 2i, and then that is x minus 3, and then that's going to be a plus 2i. And it turns out if I do that, this is going to be a much easier problem. Partly because now what you have is these are complex conjugates of one another. So let's foil this out. You have x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is going to be x minus 3 squared. Then x minus 3 times 2i, that's a plus 2i, x minus 3. Now I'm going to multiply a minus 2i times x minus 3, that's a minus 2i times x minus 3. And then minus 2i plus 2i is going to be a minus 4i squared. We immediately see um, what we've done here. Now this 2i x minus 3 and minus 2i x 3 are just opposites. One another. They're going to count and see that they're off. And this 4i squared, well i squared is minus 1, so that just becomes a plus 4. So now we need to multiply x minus 3 times x minus 3. x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x squared. It's a minus 3x and a minus 3x. That's a minus 6x. And minus 3 times minus 3 is a plus 9. And you still have your plus 4. And you have x squared minus 6x plus 13. So that's a much easier way of doing the problem. And if you don't believe me, you can go back and try to foil it in the original form. And what's the trick here? The trick is by rearranging the problem. You basically group the x and the minus 3 together and the x and the minus 3 together here. And that leads to the situation where the two i terms cancel each other out. And the i squared, of course, becomes minus 1. So let's use this in a problem. So let's write the polynomial with zeros 2 minus 5i and 2 plus 5i. So let's do f of x is equal to, let's see, if the zero is 2 minus 5i, then the factor is x minus a 2 minus 5i, and 2 plus i would be x minus 2 plus 5i. Uh, that's fine, it's just going to be difficult to factor, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to group, regroup these so that I have x minus 2, now that's a minus minus, that's a plus 5i. And then I have x minus 2, and then it's a minus 5i. So now I'm going to FOIL. So let's FOIL, that's an x minus 2, x minus 2, that's an x minus 2 squared. I'm going to just leave it like that for now. And now, if you notice what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this term times this term, and this term times this term. Those two are actually going to cancel out. This is going to be a minus 5i times x minus 2, and a plus 5i x minus 2. And those are going to cancel. And then the last thing I'm going to do is 5i times minus 5i is going to be a minus 25i squared. This term and this term are going to cancel, and you're going to get x minus 2 squared minus 25 times a minus 1, which becomes a plus 25, 
Let's FOIL this out. That's an x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then that's going to be a plus 25. And my final answer is x squared minus 4x plus 29. And that's going to be my final answer right there. Very similar problem, but here we have a polynomial with two real zeros and uh, one imaginary zero. Well, the very first step here is if 5 minus 3 and 2 plus 3i are zeros, then 5 minus 3, 2 plus 3i, and also 2 minus 3i are going to be zeros, right? Because if you have an imaginary zero with a real valued polynomial function, you're always going to have its conjugate as well. So now let's call this g of x, and that's going to be x minus 5, x plus 3, x minus 2 plus 3i, x minus 2 minus 3i. And this part is going to be, I'm just going to FOIL this, and I'm going to FOIL this. And let me do this part first, because that's going to be the hardest part. So first I'm going to rewrite this. That's going to be x minus 2 minus 3i. x minus 2 plus 3i. And you should be able to see what this answer is going to be without actually working it completely out. That's x minus 2, x minus 2. That's x minus 2 squared. Now x minus 2 times 3i is going to cancel with the minus 3i times x minus 2 and then you get minus 3i times 3i, which is a minus 9i squared. This is going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 9 minus 9 times minus 1, that's a plus 9. And we finally get x squared minus 4x plus 13. Now remember, we still have this other part of the problem, but we're done with the hard part. Now let's multiply this together, and I'm just going to bring it all the way down here. That's going to be x squared minus 2x minus 15. And now what I have to do is multiply out the two trinomials. This is going to be x to the fourth minus 4x to the third plus 13x squared. Then I'm going to do the 2x, that's a minus 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 26x. And then distribute the 15, that's minus 15x squared plus 60x. See why that's a positive? It's a negative times a negative. And then 15 times 13. 15 times 13 is going to be 150 and... I'm going to just check that to make sure. That's going to be 15 times 13. I get 195 wasn't quite right there. And now we're just going to add all those together and that's our final answer. So g of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 6x to the third. Now that's 21, positive 21 minus 6, 15 minus, let's see, 21 minus 15 is going to be a 6. Minus 26 and 60 is actually going to be a positive 34 minus 195. And though that's a long problem, that's a very doable problem. I'm going to highlight the whole thing in red. And that's how you write polynomial function given the zeros.